again, my thanks to all of you for joining. And we'll just see what kind of trouble we can get into, right? So everyone should see a Google screen. Um, no, that's not the Genealogy Center's homepage. But I wanted to show everyone um, several different ways that you can get there. Um, I'm going to offer just a couple pieces of advice while people are still coming into the Zoom session this afternoon. One piece of advice, I've given this for years, and it's still true. It's still as true today as it was decades ago when the internet and online databases were becoming a thing. Do yourself a favor. Take time to play. I know it's antithetical to our fast-paced society. It's antithetical to us as genealogists. We always want to be searching those surnames, going to ancestry. You know, our time is precious. I always encourage people to take time to play. What do I mean by that? Explore the new website. Um, don't necessarily be so focused on finding something right away, but just be focused on how do I leverage the technology that's here, the data that's here, how do I leverage that to my advantage? The couple of minutes you spend playing will make the rest of the time on the site very, very productive for you. So you'll hear me mention that at least once more during this presentation. Take time to play. So how do you get to the Genealogy Center website? Well, here we're at Google, and you can simply type in genealogycenter.org or .info from our website, but let me just do that again, genealogycenter.org, genealogycenter.org, and up pops our new website. Now, what you'll notice right away is even though you typed in genealogycenter.org, you got a URL up in your browser that doesn't say genealogycenter.org. It says kind of a convoluted little uh, concoction of letters, uh, et cetera. Don't worry about that. Just remember genealogycenter.org. That will direct you right to our main page. I'm going to go up into this uh, browser and I'm going to type in acpl.info. Okay. And you can get to the main library's website and notice up here it, in your browser, it doesn't say acpl.info either. Again, it's a work in progress. We're trying to sort out. We're going to eventually get to a stable, more intuitive uh, URL, but just remember, there's really two ways of getting to the Genealogy Center page. Come to the library's homepage, click on research, go down to genealogy, and there you are. Repeating again, if you just type in genealogycenter.org, you will also get to the new Genealogy Center website. I hope that makes sense and I hope it's easy to remember because it's the same URL that you have been using until we get the proper URL sorted out and all the right certificates and pointing, et cetera, genealogycenter.org. That's still your friend. That's still uh, something for you to remember. So voila, here we are on the new Genealogy Center website. Now, it looks very different. It looks a lot, by design, it looks a lot like the Allen County Public Library's main page. That's by design. I don't want to get into the weeds of the technology, but essentially, we had a seven-year-old um, CMS, Content Management System, running the old genealogy website. So if like one human year is seven dog years, like one human year is like maybe 15 technology years. So we had a, a CMS, a content management system that was running our site was like 100 years old. So we needed to bring it, bring it along to a new content management system. So um, the site is running on Joomla right now. Um, and it's a much more sophisticated uh, and much more flexible system. So we're still learning that and we're still trying to make it even better for you. But here we are at the Genealogy Center uh, website. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. Watch my cursor kind of scroll around or walk around on the screen. This is so neat, right up here, front and center. Well, not quite center, a little off to the right. You have the ability from this page to immediately search our catalog. We'll do that in a moment. And right underneath, 
you have the ability to search our free databases. We have nearly 5 million records and pages that are free for you to benefit from, to get family data, geographic data, to get more of your family story. So right front and center, just a little off to the right, um, are two powerful tools for you to begin to discover more of your family story. If you click on the ACPL Genealogy Center logo, it always will return you to this page. Home over here on the far left in the yellow small tiny box, that will also take you back to the Genealogy Center main page, to this page. ACPL will take you to the main libraries page if you want to explore that page. And then there are other parts of the site that could be of benefit to you. And we'll explore those as long as we have time. But I want to continue rolling down. I'm going to be a little redundant here. Website and free database search. This wonderful navigation bar that my mouse is running over that's turning those squares into yellow squares. And then as we continue to scroll down, these fantastic buttons on the left-hand side, these take you to some pretty awesome things. Now, they're things that you had access to before, but most everything was up in the top navigation bar. We pulled a lot of things down into these left-hand buttons. There's some amazing things here. It's more challenging for us to put slides on our homepage. So we only have four slides and they'll probably, they will probably stick for a while. We have a general discover your ancestors slide. Then you have buttons along the bottom that you can click on. There's our African-American gateway slide, our Native American gateway slide, and our general electric collection. For many of us, uh, general electric may not have appeal if you're not in the local area but our Native American and our African American, um, those are amazing collections of amazing, rich, deep materials. And we'll hopefully have a moment to take a look at those. I'm gonna continue scrolling down yet further. I'm so excited about this over here on the left-hand side, genealogy events. No matter when you come to our page, all of the latest events will be under genealogy events. Before, if you recall, you had to click on a tab to get to a page to get to the events. Now the events are right here. You can scroll on down. Um, they jump a little bit on your screen because this slide here changes height a little bit. We're working on getting that a little more stabilized. So excited about events. Boom, come right to our page, find events. So who we are. Well, you probably know who we are, but if you want to see our brochure, which is a general but really good overall, or view our videos, um, hopefully we'll have time to take a look at that. And then at the bottom, not because it's not important, but because it just fits neatly down here, are our four social media channels. Oh my goodness, whichever one is your favorite one, follow us, like us. Uh, we put a lot of information, particularly about our programs there. So this is the first page of the Genealogy Center website. We try to more logically, if that's the right word, or more intuitively organize things, again, putting the top two search wells right at the top. So remember my piece of advice when we first started? Take time to play. So I like to Play sometimes with something, you know, one of those really rare families, like Smith family. Hmm, wonder what happens. Notice when I started typing, some things came here, right beneath it. B. Smith family, B. Smith family and subjects, Smith family and everything, um, etc. As our catalog gets better and better, and it's gotten a whole lot better within the last month, We've been like 11 months with this new catalog, and finally we've got it to, after 11 months, a place where it's pretty good. We basically built the catalog from scratch uh, because we weren't happy with other discovery systems. We're still not 100% happy with this discovery system, so we continue to work with our technology partner on trying to make this better. Why would Kurt Witcher pick the Smith family when he has no Smiths in his lineage that he's aware of right now? Well, because I like to see what the research results are. 
if I put in Smith family and I get nothing, then I know something's wrong, right? Wouldn't you think something's wrong if you put Smith family into a catalog and nothing comes up? Well, lo and behold, here we have just a few Smiths on here, like 6,000, almost 6,100 Smiths. Um, so, okay, so that's how it's searching. Um, one of the uh, big drawbacks of our catalog is these extremely abbreviated titles. Um, they tell us nothing about the content. And that's, that's unfortunate, and, and we are working on that. So um, don't lose heart. Don't get frustrated. Um, we, are, we are working on that. Newsletter and Smith, not that helpful. But let me tell you how you can begin to make it more helpful. Coming over here to branch. The Genealogy Center is considered one of the branches of the Allen County Public Library. So we click on that, and lo and behold, we get 6,000 Smith families down to only, only 4,400 and some by clicking on genealogy. So it eliminated just shy of 2,000 records that wouldn't be of any help to us. Um, what we likely will want to do with this Smith family is to refine it further. And we would refine it by if we knew anything else about them, maybe a uh, progenitor's name, maybe a geographic location. Um, Aaron Smith, a couple of weeks ago, one of our colleagues, Aaron Smith, who's really a cataloging expert, did an entire program on how to use the WISE catalog, our new catalog. And soon that will be available on YouTube if it's not available already. So um, the catalog is just a great place to look for information. So if we want Bourbon County, uh, Kentucky, Again, our search box comes up and it's 63. If we want to make sure that um, it's all genealogy, we just click on genealogy and we get it down to, what is that, 59? And then if we're interested, again, these are extremely brief, um, almost useless titles. Bourbon County, Kentucky, Bourbon County, Kentucky, Bourbon County, Kentucky. When you want to see what is actually there, you have to click on the title. And then, oh my goodness, you get an amazing amount of information. So here's the full title, um, some physical description of the book, how many pages. For those of you who are curious, leaves are unnumbered pages. So 60 leaves is 60 unnumbered pages. But if we click on more info, another screen pops up. We see more about the publisher, um, more links, um, more information about the book itself. And there's a call number here as well as a call number on your copies screen. One of the neat things that I'll be talking about tomorrow is that thanks to Aaron and other of his team in our materials handling unit, others in that team, we have put shelf locations next to the call numbers. So when you come to the Genealogy Center, you might say, oh, 976.901, that's Kentucky, I think. But well, don't, don't have to worry about it anymore. You just look in the catalog and voila, there's Kentucky. If we want to go back and start saying, well, that's not the book I want, so we're going to go down to the next verb in Kentucky, click on that, and it's tombstone inscriptions. Again, we see Kentucky. We go to more information. Sometimes we'll get more information. Sometimes it'll just be slightly different information. So catalog, it, it's worth exploring. Uh, take time to explore. In our catalog right now, um, you can listen to Aaron's uh, video on YouTube for the catalog, but um, right now it's a good idea to go under the next rule I'd like to share with you, and that is less is more. So in our catalog, putting in a whole title or lots of words um, will normally get you conflated results, results that you probably won't be happy with. And I know I'm not saying that very eloquently, but as eloquently as I can put it, less is more. So take time to play in the catalog, so very important, and less is more. Um, so I'm gonna go back to, so we'll go back to the Allen County page, I'm gonna quickly go back to the Genealogy Center page. So I was right up here in the catalog. Now what if I wanna search our free databases? Again, we have nearly 5 million free records and images 
available for your use. There's all kinds of ways of getting at those. And we'll take a look in a moment about how to do that. But let's do a search up here. I'm going to do Ferguson as a search. That's all I'm going to do, just that, Ferguson. I'm going to click on search. The reason why I have to click on search, if I hit enter, I can hit enter all day long, and it won't execute the search. I have to actually click on search. We're working on getting that modified as well. I wanted to do this example because there are so many Fergusons. So look at this Ferguson. So all of our free databases, it tells you which database in the Allen County section, in the Indiana section, in the other state section, and the family resources, family Bible records, and our military heritage. Essentially what it does is it takes Ferguson through the entire free database website and returns results. And it tells you specifically, I have one in Allen County death. So I'm not looking for a death, so I can ignore that. Or maybe I'm just looking for everything on Ferguson in Allen County. Here's my Indiana databases. Oh my goodness, I have five in the Hendricks County probate order books. If I click on that, there are the five search results. Now in the perfect world, we'd be able to click on those and get right to the probate packets. Well, sorry, we don't live in a perfect world. And I'm kind of funning with you on a, on a Tuesday afternoon, but at least that gives us, you know, the volume and page where you can write to the Hendricks County Courthouse and get a copy of the Charles Ferguson estate, right? So you can also, if you do a little exploration on the uh, Indiana Genealogical Society website or Googling it, you can see that the Plainfield Public Library actually has these in their archive. So lots of good Good data here. I'm going to refresh my page here. And we should get back to where we were. There's the free databases. So I'm going to continue back to where we were. Um, if you want to start a new search, you need to erase this search. Or when there's an X over here, you just hit the X. But if you just start typing, it will push verbiage around and you'll get kind of a scrambled uh, search term. So over the next months, we're going to spend a lot of time up here because I think this is an underutilized part of our library's resources. Um, we put a lot of time and a lot of energy into our catalog. Um, and as has been the case in libraries, literally forever. I know a few of us can remember the cards in the old card catalog. Not many of us, but a few of us can. And those weren't that intuitive. When we went to computers, also not that intuitive. Please take time to play and remember that less is more. I'm going to have to move on else we're going to really run out of time. Donations, I'm going to click on this, not because I'm going to put a hard press on you to make a donation, but I want you to know that there are other ways to make a donation. So yes, the Genealogy Center always welcomes any kind of tax deductible gifts, but keep on going down the page. Share your research. One of the saddest things I think for many of us is to do a lifetime's worth of research and then when we're tired or done or just don't want to go on anymore or, God forbid, upon our demise, what happens to that research? I would just encourage you to think about sharing a copy of that electronically with the Genealogy Center. We'll put it on our website for others to use, and it'll be a resource that others can benefit from. What a neat way of keeping your story alive. Also, down here toward the bottom of Donate, uh, volunteer your time. If you want to index something, if you want to uh, transcribe some letters that we have online, we have tens of thousands of pages of handwritten letters that could use some transcription to make them more discoverable. Let us know if you'd like an opportunity to help others tell their story. That's why I wanted to click on that donation link. Genealogy community going next left to right across these uh, top uh, buttons here. You can take a look at the genealogy library. It's a little bit of bio. I want to point this out. Ask a genealogy librarian. This is available 24-7. We're not on 24-7, but every hour the library is open. We look for incoming email. So under genealogy community, ask a librarian. Genealogy Gems is our monthly newsletter. All the back issues are online. And there's a box over here on the right for you to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. It's a real easy, quick read. So 
one of those things you read it and then put it away, even if put it away is in your recycle bin. Um, so you can go back and take a look at some of the other things we've done. We like to highlight two pieces of the collection. We like to tell you what our forthcoming programs are. We like to give you a little bit of research methodology. It's a quick, easy read at the end of every month. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. So you can get to Genealogy Community from this button. You can get to our social media from Genealogy Community and from the bottom of the page. So we're going to go back to our home page. You'll notice there's some latency in the site. Some things are just a little slower developing than others. Um, just take time, 1001, 1002, and 1003. It's, it's there. So genealogy community, that's what's there. Librarians, our ask service, genealogy gems, and another way to get to our social. Moving across to life stories, um, if you haven't taken the opportunity to up your skills, in conducting interviews and helping people tell their life stories. This is a great site. If you wanna to listen to some life stories, lists of questions and techniques, this is a great TED Talk right here, 10 ways to have a better conversation. Uh, oh my goodness, we don't have the 10 minutes that it takes to listen to this, but what a place, what a place. So if you're having trouble struggling with interviewing and communicating better, it's a great place to go. So we're gonna go back to the Genealogy Center page, Life Stories, Pathfinders. Now don't blink, we're gonna click on this and oh my goodness, wow. There's like seven different links here. On the left-hand side are snapshots. Every single state in the union has its own snapshot. What's a snapshot you might ask? I'm gonna click on Michigan, a snapshot, are the few snowflakes on the tip of the iceberg for every state. Specifically, what do I mean by that? These are the major indices broken down alphabetically by subject that help you get started. Okay, I haven't researched in Michigan before. Gee, where should I start? Well, here's some research guides, the call number and the title, biography, census, court, directories, maps and place names, military, et cetera. So every state, we've tried to pull out the major tomes for that state that help one kind of get your feet wet. That's a pretty amazing uh, collection of, of material. So one for every state. Then if we, if we go back to Pathfinders and go to subjects, we have a dozen different subjects that you can click on, same kind of thing. And then back to Pathfinders again, and these are all Allen County birthless, congregations, plat maps, and Fort Wayne photographers. These are specialty lists. So Pathfinders opens up sort of a whole new world of access to our collection. Again, the, the snowflake on the tip of the iceberg. I fear sometimes that people might take a look at a Pathfinder and they might say, wow, these are all the Michigan books you have. And it's like, no, no, it's like, less than 1% of all the Michigan books or less than a half a percent of all the South Carolina books we have. It's just a way of getting started. We're approaching halfway through and I'm not even halfway through the site yet. Oh my goodness, our resources. This link, this button takes you to a list of all of our databases, our free databases and our on-site databases. We really mean this. Our goal is to make your search successful. So free databases, let's click on those first. Um, we could spend an hour here and I'm kind of remiss that maybe we're not able to. Our Microtext catalog, I'm gonna pause here. This could be for some people a bit confusing because we have all of our Microtext in the Allen County Public Library's WISE catalog, the whole entire collection, all of our genealogy books and all of our genealogy microfilm are back here, discoverable right up here in the catalog. But we also have a special, what I call legacy microtext catalog, where if you just want a quick dive into, okay, I want counties and I'm gonna choose a state, I'm gonna choose Illinois and I'm gonna choose 
Um, what should I choose? Champagne, because I like champagne. I'm going to spell it wrong. I did spell it wrong. Um, so let me try one that I can spell right here. Let me try just um, uh, Florida. We're going to try Dade County there and see what pops up. We're going to click on search. And we have to actually have nothing for Miami Day. Well, this isn't working out very well. I'm going to choose a state for directories. Let's go to Georgia for directories. There's all the general directories for Georgia, Athens County, Augusta County, Columbus County, the years, and then it tells you how many rolls of what size microfilm. If there's ever a title that's a link in our microtext, our legacy microtext catalog, you can click on that and see which roll number has specifically which years. So it's a great place to get what I call the legacy microtext collection. Um, let's go back to free databases. African American Gateway, we'll come back to that in a moment. Allen County Resources, oh my goodness. If you're interested in Allen County, there's more than a million and a half records and images through this site. You can get to it from that site search we looked at a few minutes ago, or you can pick by topic and then by specific resource what you'd like to look at. An amazing amount of information here. Uh, again, a million and a half images and, and records. Family Bibles, family resources. Um, we're going to continue to make this page uh, a more intuitive page, but oh my goodness, the amount of records here. So surnames A to E, F to J. So we're going to click on here. We're going to scroll down to Hudson Family. That's a particular big resource that was donated to us. Um, and we've spent an amazing amount of time digitizing Hudson Family Association records. So their bulletins are all readable, all these links here. Another of their periodicals, Hudsoniana. All 49 issues available, and that's the first page of that one. And then the state files, oh my goodness. There are hundreds of thousands of pages of state files for this Hudson Family Association. So amazing amounts of materials in this family resources, just a, a gold mine, just an absolute gold mine. Back to our free databases, surname file, Indiana resources, Native American gateway. I do want to point out other state resources. There's at least something for most every state in the union that's free. We don't really have the time to explore that today, but I want to point out this general resources it's kind of hidden under other states' resources. So you might want to make a mental note to yourself. Look under other states for general resources. What are general resources? Well, they're things that cover multiple states or cover a national organization that covers the entire country. So the Evangelical Messenger Obituary Index. This covers states along the entire Great Lakes area from New York, swimming down, swapping down, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, Illinois, Minneapolis, excuse me, Minnesota and Wisconsin, 194, almost 200,000 obituaries. You can search for a surname or you can browse a date. What an amazing resource. And these obituaries, oftentimes will give you information about the person, their family, and the place in Germany where they came from. The National Archives Finding Aid is another one I want to point out. Uh, we have almost as many National Archives Finding Aids on our site as any other place. Um, a number of reference professionals at the National Archives like to point people here. So microfilm publication guides, preliminary inventories, and when you click on any of these, it gives you a tremendous amount of information about records in the National Archives, how they're described, how you can find them. It's really uh, pretty amazing. So all that's under other states. 
going back to free databases, our military heritage. We're particularly proud of this because we're not competing with Fold3, Ancestry. This is contributed data, things that wouldn't be in these large databases, but things that people have contributed to us, that they've donated to our collection, or the things that we have found in our collection that aren't available elsewhere online that are copyright clear. So from the colonial wars, all the way up through Afghanistan and Iraq, not a lot of information here, but there's what we call outlier information. Information, again, you won't find on the ancestry family of products. There's a roll call where every single person who's mentioned in a primary or central way in our military heritage, there's a direct link to their, their pages, and there's an A to Z nav bar at the very top where you can click on the surname that, that you're interested in. If you haven't played with that, again, it's what you might call an insomnia buster. Uh, so a lot of great free databases. I just want to point out quickly our African-American heritage. If you have any African-American uh, heritage and stories in your family, this is well worth a look. If your family was in the South in pre-Civil War time period, a lot of these resources are also worth a look. So if you're interested in a particular state, you click on states. And there's the map that you're interested in. You can do south of the Mason-Dixon line, or you can do north of the Mason-Dixon line. Uh, we can see what kind of resources are for Michigan. Um, we usually have a list of websites, and then all the books that we have specific to African-American research in Michigan, in this example, are listed here generally, and then alphabetically by county, with call numbers and a microtext designation if it's film or fiche. So amazing resources here for those wanting to find their, their African-American stories. Um, this same type of gateway um, is available for Native American research as well. That can be very challenging. It's a different look, but how to begin our microtext catalog that just has Native American material, our genealogy center catalog, and then some highlights of National Archives guides, Cherokee records, Indian census records, um, a lot of great material in these, in these gateways. So I wish we had a little more time to spend here, but under free databases, here are the major categories. I'm gonna scroll through them again. Family resources, family Bible, surname file, Indiana resources, other states records, our military heritage, and the library's community album, which really centers on Fort Wayne, Allen County, Northeast Indiana material, over 110,000 entities outside the nearly 5 million um, that we have. So all of these you can browse, or you can remember, go right back up to the top of the website, and you can search across any of those data files that have been OCR, optical character recognition software run across the top, and we can conduct searches, and we'll get that nice search screen that tells us how many of what we're searching for are in each database. Uh, pretty amazing. I'm gonna go back home, click on that little yellow home box. I wanna spend just a few moments in our family history archive. This used to be where you can see my mouse kind of rolling around. It used to be here on our main genealogy center page, but now it's over here under family history archive. Um, these five things are uber important. Family history books. Oh my gosh, did you know that you have a personal family history library of over a half a million volumes? That's true. Each one of us has access to over 500,000 family histories and local histories that can be read online, can be full text searched, can be downloaded to our own computers through family history books. It's amazing. Um, we're probably going to spend some time in a future presentation just talking about family history books. FamilySearch.org, um, I'm going to click here quickly. Everyone's familiar with this site, but we specifically, we partner with Family Search on digitizing books. But we always want to point out this research wiki. This is a juried wiki. I know a lot of people say, wiki, oh, I don't like wikis because anyone can post anything, and it may not be true. Well, here... The Family Search Research Wiki is a juried wiki, meaning not everyone can post here. This is over 93,000 
great search tips on how to do, you name it, Ukrainian research, Alabama research, French research, French Canadian research. There's a topic for nearly every possible thing you could be searching for and links to online um, information as well. So um, just wanted to call your, call your attention that it's well, well worth your while. Internet Archive, they have been digitizing for well more than a decade books from all over the world. And the, the, they digitize everything, literature, comics, you name it. They actually digitize 54 television stations. They take the live streams. What's really important for us, though, as family historians, as storytellers, are the history publications, family history, local history publications. Did you know that more than 110,000 items from the Genealogy Center collection are available online at the Internet Archive. So anytime, day or night, you can search them, you can download them, you can read them online. So some pretty amazing things there. Linkpendium, this is the Uber collection of genealogy links. Many people don't know Linkpendium. They know Cindy's List, which has a fraction, just a small fraction of what Linkpendium has. Cindy's List has about 500,000 links. Linkpendium has 10 million. So there are locality links in the United States. You can see my mouse highlighting them as I scroll over those. And then there's like over 9 million surname links from all over the world. Um, you could spend hours here. We know that a lot of people don't know Linkpendium, so we like to send people here. It's a great place to find a lot of information. We relate.org is like an online vertical file. So if we go back, Family History Archive, that's this button right here. Um, you can get lost there. There's so much information. I'm going to click once more just to entice you. Family History Books, Internet Archive. You know, six, seven hundred thousand volumes at your disposal. FamilySearch.org, your research assistant can get you answers no matter what your research is. So link Pendium and the we relate.org. I get excited just talking about it. There's so much there. So moving down here, our services, we click on that. What are our services? Well, ask a librarian. Um, we strongly urge you, whenever you have a question, a brick wall, you find something in our catalog that doesn't make sense, you find something in our catalog that does make sense, and you say, how can I get my hands on that? Send us an email. Um, we are always um, excited to engage you um, through email. Um, we always were, but particularly during this very challenging pandemic time that we live in. We don't travel nearly as much as we would like to. We don't spend time in as many public places for as long as we would like to. So um, spend some time um, you know, thinking about where we can help you with your research. And, and do um, send an email to genealogy at acpl.info. We also will do tours. Um, it's a little more challenging in uh, these pandemic times, but we're open to doing tours. We want people to be safe and we want our staff to remain safe. So we like physical distancing, but we've done tours for a dozen people. If you are comfortable coming as a group, say you've isolated together, you've quarantined together, you've been together outside, you know, not a whole lot outside your bubble, well then you're fine coming here as a group. Um, the only thing that's required during pandemic times here in the Genealogy Center is for you to wear a mask and not be within six feet of people you don't know. But if you come with a carload of people you know, you can sit right next to each other. Um, we're just about keeping people safe and keeping our staff safe. So if you, I should say when you feel comfortable coming back to the Genealogy Center, we welcome you with open arms, just not hugging arms, just open arms. and. Um, we'll help you uh, learn uh, the center if it's your first time here. Learn the center again if you're returning. I want to scroll down to consultations. Um, you can call us or you can email us. If you really have a brick wall where you'd really like to sit down figuratively, because you can stand up where you're at, um, you can lay down where you're at. But if you'd like time with a genealogist here in the Genealogy Center, Call us, email us, and say, hey, 
I'd like to set up a time where I can spend 10, 15, 20, maybe even 30 minutes talking through my problem. We can do it over the phone. We can do it through back and forth email. We can do it through Zoom. What you're watching this presentation on today, we can do a consultation through Zoom and we're happy to do that. Maybe we share some documents. Maybe we take a look at how you've assessed things. Maybe we decipher some handwriting together. Maybe we really uh, muse about next best steps. You know, we've all run into research problems where it looks like I've done everything and it's just not coming for me. Further down, remember we're still on the Our Services, we have links to forms. If you'd like to uh, request articles, request some research, request a couple quick copies of some forms there. I don't know who this guy is, but there's a video there about the uh, Welcome to the Genealogy Center, a little bit more about the Genealogy Center. These two videos we have found so helpful, gathering home sources, getting started, and the research process. We've shared these with visiting groups. We've shared these with adults. Most recently, we've shared these with high schoolers who are interested in doing their family history. So our services, there's a lot to explore under our services. Let's go back to the Genealogy Center page and go under plan your visit. You might say, well, why do I need that? I've been to the Genealogy Center many times before. Well, if you've forgotten what our hours are, that's always important. Library map, parking information, and restaurants. Um, most of our restaurants are physically distancing at a percentage of their capacity. I do wanna point out our, the link to our friends at Visit Fort Wayne. Visit Fort Wayne is really helping us make you, if you're not in the local area, comfortable coming to Fort Wayne and using the Genealogy Center. So if we click on that link, you know, find your story in Fort Wayne, Indiana. It's kind of a quick how to plan a visit. There's a form here that you can fill out that's mailed, emailed, I should say, right to us. Um, you can schedule how to learn more. Um, it's just a neat place to get more comfortable with the Genealogy Center. If you'd like a genealogy visitor pack, and here they're also pushing our consultation. So um, take advantage of our good friends from, from Visit Fort Wayne. I'm gonna go back to the homepage again. There we are. So we've done the plan your visit. We're gonna scroll down to this um, bottom section here, Genealogy Center brochure. We're gonna click on that just quickly to let you know it's just an easily downloadable PDF. It gives you sort of a 65,000 foot view of what we have to offer and then view our videos drops you on the page where we just were. So I did it. I think I did it in like 45 minutes, a quick virtual tour of the Genealogy Center, the new Genealogy Center webpage. Um, there's just so much here um, to explore. Um, the genealogy community, life stories, pathfinders. I'll click on that again just to show you. This is really Allen County specific where you see my cursor drawing a box. We'll click on Allen County congregations and we can enlarge that if we'd like. And we have a 20 page document that basically goes through general and denominational histories and then an alphabetical listing of congregations in Fort Wayne with call numbers of print material and some microfilm um, that might get you more information about, about those congregations. Um, plat maps, another PDF that, that pops up. I'm gonna do just a couple of more searches in this um, free database. Once again, I hit enter and I can hit enter from now until 3.30 and nothing will happen. So I click on search because I know you're all interested in witchers, but I just wanna show you again, what I consider to be a really nice layout of information. Who would have thought there were, there were this many witchers in our data files? Uh, but we can pick on just the ones, or we can pick on ones that have a lot of, a lot of hits like this rotary spin. Um, we can go back and we need to clear that and enter another term. 
but I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and I'm going to open it up for some questions.